This is part two of our React and front end scenario based interview question series. There is a 90% chance that these exact questions can be asked in your next front end interview. Make sure you don't miss any questions in this series and watch this video till end. If you haven't watched part one yet, I would highly recommend to watch part one. And if you comment interview questions, I'm going to share a detailed answer sheet for these scenario based interview questions. You can also follow me on Instagram for daily coding tips. Let's get started. The first question we have is how do you handle a form with 20 plus fields efficiently in interviews when they ask about large forms they want to see if you can optimize for performance and maintainability here is how i would answer this first i wouldn't keep 20 plus fields inside a single react state i wouldn't keep 20 plus fields in single react state because it is very hard to manage instead i would use a form management library just like formic or react hook form the first solution i would say is use formic or react hook form so i can make use of these kind of libraries so they will make my task easy for managing complex and hard state of these complex forms they render only the field that is changing and not the entire form will be re-rendered suppose you are checking one checkbox only this part will be re-rendered and not this text input that is the benefit of using these libraries because they are already battle tested and they are very good for the performance this is about the first solution the second i would structure the form into logical sections or steps what are logical sections or steps for example person info address preferences all the fields related to that particular section will be grouped that's how we can manage the state efficiently and also from the usability and the ux perspective it will be very efficient so add steps or logical sections most of the times when you are answering the scenario based questions you have to just show what solutions you can implement you don't have to code in those kind of questions you have to show the answers or ways how we can tackle this real world problem the next thing i would use controlled components with validation rules what are controlled components the state is fully managed they have the value and on change handler in the react you can say the value and on change handler is attached to every control these control controls are called controlled components what are uncontrolled ones uncontrolled will be managed by ref uncontrolled will be managed by refs that is how we can differentiate between controlled and uncontrolled uncontrolled components are very hard to manage when there are complex forms it is hard to manage i'll use controlled components finally i would use dynamic field rendering like suppose a field is not required because it depends on some condition in that case conditional or we can say dynamic rendering of fields though we have 20 plus fields only the required fields will be displayed first so that the user will not get confused by number of fields so it will be incrementally loaded based on the conditions conditional or dynamic rendering is one of the solution to this the fifth solution is i'll use zord like validation libraries so zord is a very good validation library for forms we can define the schema and everything is there in the zord for the validations zord is a good solution for validation by using these steps we can handle even if you have 200 fields not 20 even if you have 200 fields by using these steps it will be very easy to manage complex forms you can answer by putting these points against your interviewer and you will get through this question the next question we have is your react app needs to support dark mode how do you implement it this is one of the hottest scenario based question right now my approach would be first i would decide if the dark mode is user preference based or system based user based or system based for example your system your windows or mac os or linux it is dark mode based or light mode based based on that i can decide the theme of our web application this is called system based but the user based is kind of the user will decide to show the app in dark mode or light mode for example you must have seen some websites that those open in the light mode by default but you can switch to the system or the dark mode later so this is user base that's how we can decide it for system preference i would use css media query prefers color scheme so prefers color scheme we can use this media query if it is dark we'll switch our web app to the dark mode otherwise we'll switch it to the light mode what about the user preference for the user preference we can store the theme in the local storage so suppose the app theme is dark 
so we can store it in the local storage the next time the app loads it will pick the value from the local storage and it will start showing the content in the dark mode that's how we can store this theme that's about the decision of the theme but what about how will you pass this theme from the parent component to the each and every child component we can use redux or context api correct in the context in the provider we can provide the theme value and by using use context we'll read that theme value and in redux it is pretty simple just like reading any state value you can just keep the theme value in the store and you can read it using the use selector and whenever the value will be updated in the context on redux it will be reflected to each and every component that's how our app will switch from light to dark and dark to light mode this is about passing the value how will you define the style for style you can use css variables if you are using css in js like use styles hook some libraries provide in that case you can use tokens like the theme tokens in material ui also you have palette tokens just like that and also you can use tailwind css dark preface in the classes we have this dark attribute so that everything we declared with this dark like the classes that are declared with dark will be applied when the, the root element has the theme declared as a dark or light that's how it works yeah the main expected thing from the interviewer is the theme state should be global you should never define a different theme for each and every component the theme should always be global so that whenever you toggle it at the global state it will be auto reflected in the children level this was the answer about the question 7 the next question we have is how do you prevent xss cross-site scripting in front-end apps very interesting question and very much important question because this is related to the security of application before answering the question i would like to explain those who don't know what xss attack is xss is cross-site scripting what is cross-site sc scripting some malicious html has some malicious script in it that is injected in your web application for example you have one app you have one app and it has some html okay html css and js and some malicious html okay, some malicious html which has some malicious js also like like some script that is a virus you can say that will be injected but somehow into your application script and it will be run by your application your application is running this malicious script and as this is a malicious script it will have serious consequences because it will expose the user's data or it can do anything like it it will be hacked like even the payment data anything can be hacked using this okay, so this is called xss this is called xss cross cross site scripting this is cross site means two sites and scripting scripting means js is involved in this this is xss by default react escapes all the values before ending which already helps prevent injection attacks like this but still we have to implement some security practices so that we will never get trapped into this what are those we should never use dangerously set html attribute dangerously set inner html i don't know if you know this attribute but what this does is um, on every div or every element we can have this attribute in the html where we can set some html in the string format we can set some html in the string format if you are using this attribute so this this html can be malicious okay this html can be malicious this is again exposure to the xss so don't use this attribute so you understood about dangerously set html attribute now let's see about the other precautions we can take suppose there is an input field suppose there is an input field uh, which is basically some text field what hackers can do hackers can put or write some html as a text okay html and javascript as a text here and that can be run by your application unknowingly this is again one xss attack correct we should avoid using eval which evaluates the user input or any string that is coming from user and also we should use dom purify library dom purify you should use dom purify to sanitize every user input like which is a string what dom purify does is it removes any malicious scripts embedded in the user input string so this is the use of dom purify so this process is called as sanitization so you understood about the dom purification and the user input the next thing we can do is use csp headers so this is contents content security policy headers we can use content security policy headers they enforce 
enforce the security practices. They enforce in the security practices. They are usually sent from back end. They are usually sent from back end, but they secure the front end. Secure front end. We should use CSP headers. The final important thing is if you are passing some user input, like as I said in the earlier example about like the text box, right? Some user input directly it should not go into any user attribute. For example, data. So this is a some random attribute, and this string you are setting based on user input user input for example any class can be there or anything if you are setting based on user input this can be malicious this can be malicious so don't do this instead if, if the use case is such that you have to pass this data to the attribute use always use dom purify to sanitize it so user input will be dom purified and then it will be applied to the attributes that's why it will get the sanitized input there that's how you can prevent excesses so this was the answer to this question next question we have is how do you handle offline or online state gracefully in react with service workers this is where you show real world problems always so first i'd use navigator.online api so how will you understand that the user is online or offline we have information in the navigator object that is provided by the browser the browser provides us this info so navigator.online we can use this api by the browser to listen to online and offline events so there are two types of event online and offline whenever the user goes online this this event will be triggered whenever the user goes offline this event will be triggered based on these events what you have to do you can decide based on this suppose the user is online and suddenly the network interrupts for the user what you can do so you can show a toast message that you are offline so so you have to show this toast message whenever this offline event is triggered whenever the user comes back on the internet or it comes online you have to disappear this message and continue working of your app this is how you can handle online and offline events so the question says use service worker so i the second thing i'll do is i would use a service worker to cache the assets and api responses using the cache api the app works offline for example the user is offline you, we are showing the toast message that you are offline whenever the user is offline we should not stop the working of application what we can do in that period is we can use service worker cache cache the data of the apis and also assets so that whenever you are offline the, the app will refer to this cache instead of the real network so it will not go to the real network because it is offline it will go to this cache and it will work through the cache it is kind of a pwa progressive web app whenever the app is offline using navigator uh, we can get to know about it in in that we can use cache that's how we can use the service worker here that's how you can answer this question the next and very important real world scenario question is production the production server is not getting the latest deployed update suppose your app is running on production and it is not getting that you did some update and you pushed some code and a new feature everything is done pipeline is succeeded but the user the real user is not getting that update the app that that is shown on the user's device is still the old app it doesn't have the new feature that you deployed only in the incognito it is working how do you solve this problem because the app is already running in the inside the production this becomes tricky how will you solve this problem this problem usually happens due to the caching issues because it is working in incognito that means in incognito we don't have any cache how we can handle it first the first thing what we can do is in the chrome dev tools you can always check about your service workers what they are caching and what not check if the service worker is caching aggressively aggressively means it is always caching it is always reading the data from the cache and it is never going to the fetch it is always serving the response from the caching that is a real problem because even if there is a new chunk of code or new feature is there still it is not referring here it is always going to cache that's a problem check the service worker that is the first thing we can do second about the static assets like the javascript chunks so if you have a bundler tool like webpack or wheat our java JavaScript, complete JavaScript code is divided into chunks. For example, main.js. So this is a chunk, for example. But if you are keeping the name of chunk like this, possibly what will happen? The user's browser will have main.js cached on his browser. Now you are pushing some code and the next chunk name is also main.js. So what will happen? This main.js, the browser will think nothing has changed because the main.js is already downloaded. So it will not download the new co copy. 
what webpack and wheat or these kind of bundlers have is hashing hash what the what the hash is every time you deploy the application the chunk name will be like main one two three four x y z dot js the next time you deploy it will be main dot five five six seven a b c dot js now the main is there but the this value is different so the browser will understand this is not cached because this value is different this is a new chunk it will again download it this caching will be resolved always enable hashing in your bundling process so this is about the caching uh, what next we can do what next we can do uh, we can check the cache control headers cache control headers what cache control headers are from back end we can set no cache or must revalidate headers must revalidate these headers means this particular index html or whatever we are setting for will not be cached index.html if we are not caching it it will refresh the application each time also what next we can do is in the head section of the html we can set the app version meta tag app version we can set the app version meta tag this version will be changed on each deployment each new deployment or each new feature deployment this app version will be differentiated when a new deployment is happening that's how the application can know that the version is changed that's how we can solve this problem and that's it you now know how to answer some of the toughest front-end and react scenario based questions that are almost guaranteed to come in your front-end interviews comment interview questions in the comment box and i'll send you the link to the complete detailed answer sheet for these questions and please do watch part one of this series so that you don't miss any scenario based interview question follow me on instagram for daily coding and interview tips and that's it for today bye bye